What is going on guys, Vlad with eeenthusiast.com here and today we're going to be doing some Java programming once again. So what I got here is actually the previous implementation of a singly linked list and today we're going to be building up on that knowledge by implementing a stack and a queue data structure. So those two data structures rely heavily on a uh, linked list or linked node implementation. So it's going to be really easy for us to leverage the previous implementation and kind of build up on that. And I'm going to be showing you really briefly, you know, explaining kind of the data structures, what the, the differences are. Then we're going to jump into the code. And finally, uh, as always, solve a couple of problems that you might be asked on a technical interview or just in a classroom, and you should know the answers to. So without any further delay, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're going to be creating is a queue. So what I'm going to do is right click my default package, go into new class and name this a queue. So this will be our queue implementation. Here's our new class. Um, and before we uh, before I begin explaining, you know, the code, let's really quickly talk about a queue. So you can really easily visualize this as a queue to a, for example, a restaurant order. So if you have a line of 10 people, you know, the first person that came in is going to be the next person served, so to speak, second, third, and uh, etc. So as people come in, the first pe person that came in is going to be serviced and the next one, the next one and the next one, thus uh, giving this data structure the name of first in first out or FIFO, which is uh, more commonly know in the known in the programming world. So what we're going to do here is leverage like I've mentioned the singly linked list that we've built in the previous tutorial. And that's going to be kind of the the cornerstone of our queue. So private singly linked list, uh, new singly linked list. So we're going to be implementing the singly linked list to hold our queue that I make a typo here. Singly linked list. And um, again, so the data structure essentially does not hold its own elements, it's going to leverage the nodes that we have in the singly linked list implementation. If you need to go back to that tutorial, please make sure to do so. But um, our constructor here is going to be public queue. And that's going to hold nothing for now. Uh, so it's just going to be an empty constructor of type Q public and size. So the same, the same way as our linked list had the size, we're going to have to retrieve the size Let's return list at size. Okay. We're going to make it really easy for the user to figure out if it is empty. So public Boolean is empty. And this is going to return once again, the list dot is empty, which is a function in our linked list, which tells us if it's empty or not. Next, we're going to have so imagine if you have a string of people, you need to, uh, you need to do two things, you need to be able to add people at the end of the queue. And you need to be able to remove the people at the front of the queue. And occasionally also, uh, you want to be able to peek at the first person of the queue, which is the most important one that you're going to be dealing with next. So going on with the with that mentality, public void and queue. And queue, I'm just double checking my spelling here, element. And so we're going to enqueue a certain element at the uh, end of the queue, which is list that add last. Uh, this is the function that we've implemented for our linked list. So add last element element. Uh, then public void. Uh, e, sorry, public e dq. So obviously, the unqueue function is going to take the parameter of the element that you want to unqueue and the dq function is going to return the first person in that line or the first person in that queue, dq. And this will be return list that remove first. So we're going to remove the first element of our list and return that element. And notice how here we add the last element and return the first element. So essentially the first in first out mentality. And lastly, like I've mentioned, 
So if we want to just look at the first element, we want to see what's inside. I'm going to return list that first. Um, so that's, uh, that's pretty much as simple as it gets for a queue once you've built a singly linked list. And uh, so we should be able to go back into our main and do a quick demo. So in our main function, you know, let's first essentially uh, create an instance of our queue, which is going to be queue. Let's make that a string. So we're, we're going to make uh, a number of people kind of going into the queue, new queue string. And then so that's going to be that's going to be our queue uh, data structure that's going to be initialized. And then we're going to do my queue dot and queue. And here, let's name a uh, person not super original with the name. So let's do, you know, person one person two type of deal person. So let's do five people, right? So one, two, three, four, and five. Uh, so these people are in queue and into our queue, as you can imagine, person one should be the first one serviced. So if we do my queue, the DQ, uh, then it should be person one, of course. Which we'll see, which will be, um, and if I run this program, so we should we should be adding, you know, person one, two, three, four, five, but then we're DQ in one, two, three, four, five, again, in the order that they came in. That's very important. And that's going to be the main difference between uh, your stack data structure. So that's pretty much the implementation. Obviously, if I add some more DQs, it's going to return a null, because we have that set up in the list. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to it to a queue. All right, so the next data structure we're going to be talking about is a stack. So the most iconic and easy to understand example is with a deck of cards. So imagine if your stack is empty at this point, which is my hand right here. And if I put a card, which is the ace of hearts, that's going to be the card at the bottom of the stack, then I add the ace of spades on top. Uh, and obviously, you can see the pattern here ace of um, clubs. So if I want to remove the card, I'm going to be removing the last card that I put in and so on. And the bottom of my stack is going to be the last card to be removed. So obviously, this um, data structure is called the first in last out or philo for short in programming. And uh, once again, very simple implementation, and let's jump right into it. So of course, the first thing we're going to do is create a new class, which is going to be called a stack. And the stack is going to have variable element called the generic. So once again, we're going to be leveraging the singly linked list. So I need to create that data structure, private singly linked list. E list is a new singly linked list. Okay. Public stack so empty constructor for a stack public in size uh, so very similar to the queue as you can notice uh, the size return size so return list that size uh, very important because we need to return the size of our uh, singly linked list and in instantiated above public boolean is empty. And once again, return list dot is empty. It's going to tell us if the stack is empty or not, or can we remove more cards from it? Um, public void push. So as you mentioned, the queue and the stack kind of have like different names for our uh, for the functions, they're kind of generic towards the stacks and the queues. If you read some books, they're going to use most likely the same names. Um, so just uh, something to keep in mind that you know, the the queue has the on queue and the DQ functions versus the stack has the push pop um, type of a structure. So just pay attention to names like that. If you do uh, use a different uh, source for your studies, uh, let's start add first. So obviously, we're going to add a first element. And that's going to be element um, public 
E pop. So the push is going to be adding a an item onto our stack. The pop is going to be returning the item from our stack. Public pop is going to return list that remove first. And uh, one thing you want to notice is that here you add a first element and then you remove the first element versus the queue we were adding a last element and then removing the first one. So that's the the structure, uh, the difference in the structures. And we're going to do a top. So this is going to allow the user to look at the first elements on top of the stack for whatever reason, if they needed to use it in their computing list dot first and uh, that should be all for the stack pretty simple uh, straightforward implementation let's go back into our uh, main function and here what we're going to do is string my stack equals to new stack of strings okay so we're initializing the same data structure. But here, what I want to do is do the exact same thing, but essentially uh, show you how it uh, reverses if it's in a stack. So what I'm going to do here is type in my stack. Um, actually, that's not going to work because we have like I've mentioned in queue and DQ. So we're going to do push. Not push. Okay. But we're still going to keep the same kind of convention. So we're going to push. Let's say let's do just three people. One, two, and three. And my stack. That pop. Okay. So let's see uh, what the response is going to be. Um, so as you can see, we're pushing element number one, number two, and number three. But now number one is actually at the bottom of our stack, right? You have one, two, and three. And what you're going to remove from the stack is the top element first. So three, two, and one, thus uh, making it a first in last out. So number one, number one was first in and number one was last out uh, to be removed. So hopefully that clarifies the implementation of the stacks fairly straightforward. Let's jump into the next section. So one of the most asked questions when it comes to stacks is actually how do you use a stack to reverse a string. So if you can imagine a string is an array of characters essentially and the easy kind of solution to reversing that is popping them all onto the stack. And obviously, as you remove them off the stack, then the first character that you put in is going to be the last one and the first one that you and the last one you put in is going to be the first one, thus reversing the string. So we're going to be looking at how that looks in code, we're going to go into our stack implementation and create a new function, which is going to be public string. So this is going to re return a string, it's going to be called reverse, and it's going to have a string my string my string. And uh, we're going to need a couple of things here. So first of all, we're going to uh, print let's, uh, let's print out system that out that print line. So initial string, initial string equals two equals two plus my string. Uh, just for uh, kind of demonstration purposes, we're going to print out the initial string and then look at what it's going to be in the end. As you can see on the bottom here, I've already tested it really quick. So uh, string new string is going to be equal to just an empty string initialized. Uh, and then what we're going to do is create our stack. So stack of string my stack is equal to new stack. Um, so yeah, stack of string my stack is equal to a new stack. And then we're going to have to first of all, push all of the elements onto the stack. So four int i equals to zero, which is where our string begins, i smaller than my string dot length I is incremented. 
open our function and what we're gonna do is my stack dot push push and the string element that we want to take is essentially sequent uh like one by one each character so we can do this in a multitude of ways but the most the easiest one to understand is my string dot substring and the beginning is at i and the end is at i plus one so each single time we're going to take the character at i and end at i plus one so that's going to populate our stack now we need to essentially pop the elements off the stack and get them into our next uh into our final string and that's going to look like this while as you remember we have this very nice utility function which is going to be my stack that is empty so while the stack is not empty we're going to continue popping and the new string is going to be equal to itself plus my stack dot pop. So we're going to keep appending the elements to our uh, string from the stack. Then what we're going to do system that out that print line and it's going to be final string equals two plus new string string um so we're going to output and then we're going to return return new string um yeah printing out the initial string popping all of the elements onto the stack and then removing the elements of the stack and a in an orderly fashion so if we have so let's test it out string uh, my test string is equal to uh, my stack dot reverse and uh, let's do um, one two three four five as a first run so going through this the initial st string is one two three four five we're adding uh, these are the callouts from our linked list, if you remember. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then we're removing 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and the final string is reversed. Obviously, this works with anything. Let's write E enthusiast, run, and as you can see, the implementation works with this as well. So the initial string is E enthusiast, and then we're adding the nodes accordingly so it's going to be um then pushed off the stack the same way and the resulting string is going to be this tsai sun ti so that's what we got at the end um so as you can see very simple very straightforward way of reversing a string by using a stack data structure thank you guys for watching this video if you've enjoyed the content make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons below i also want you to check out the description and a couple of links that i left for you with uh, extra content last but not least leave me a comment if you have any suggestions for next videos questions about this topic or otherwise uh, thank you once again for watching and see you next time.